welcome everyone to the Spectral Esports broadcast. It is I, Toasty, joined here by Hex today. We're going to bring you the coverage of Void versus Paralysis score. And Hex, we're getting right into things here. The teams have already started the game. So what are we expecting out of this matchup? Okay, yeah. So we're not expecting too much. I mean, this is definitely going to be quite an exciting game. And and I know that, that we're both expecting it to go to go one way because, I mean, just, just by looking at team and, and Scrum SR, it's definitely looking um, like Void has has a major upper hand as they are scrumming um, at a usual Scrum SR of, of 3.5k, whereas Paralysis score is scrumming at 2.8. So that's nearly, that's 700 SR, ne nearly a whole two ELOs. So I, I think we both know where, where this is going to be going. Yeah, absolutely, Hacks. And when we look at matchups like this, of course, you know that I really support the underdogs here. In this case, that is Paralysis Score. Um, and, you know, as you see right now on the screen, it's looking like they want to play some sort of uh, Widowmaker composition, which is something I think is rare, um, but I think it works on this map. Yeah, definitely. And if it is, if, if you do know how to play it, and if you do kind of pull it off correctly, then it can really definitely work because Widow is such a powerful character if you have really great aim and, and good positioning. And I think if if Tilted Waffle can get away with that and then get away with it in the right way, it can definitely work perfectly. But the fire is already starting with a, with a bit of a dive. Yeah, both Echoes actually getting frags into the enemy backlines, but Viper is the uh, anomaly there as they do fall. Both backlines down, in fact, so it's an absolute rampage from both sides. But Stellar here on the Tracer, managing to clean up catches the two dive remaining members. Um, and as soon as they get the point in presence, it looks like Void will be taking it. Yeah, and that was a surprisingly even um, fight, considering the, the SRs which we were just talking about. Um, and although it was obviously won um, by Void, Paralysis score did put up like a reasonable fight. I mean, they, they only just lost at the end. And um, and I mean, it, they, they, they held quite well against that, that little bit of a dive. I mean, it, it wasn't a full dive considering it, it, we are playing bu double bubble here. Or sorry, at least Void is playing double bubble here. But um, it was maybe a half dive if you are if you are the monkey. Um, and now a bit of a, another dive is coming through from Paralysis score here. Not, not really finding much um, yeah. at the moment, but they are going to be pushing on quite hard. Yeah, Monkey's going low here, but it does look like Arcane Haze is getting the worst end of that one. Taken out by the Echo Mines, just so much damage, especially when you, uh, you're you layering it over a bunch of other damage from the team. And this is where the flip comes through, is Paralysis score. It actually evened things up and might get similar to the percentage that Void already had. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's definitely a lot of potential to get a similar percentage, but I think um, the minimum will probably be like 25 around that, um, and the maximum could be anything. I mean, even 100 um, they could get if they hold really well. But um, I mean, they, they do have a pri nano primal ready um, for the monkey, which I think is probably going to be coming in this fight um, if they if they do play it play it well. Um, and normally, not too many odds coming through from. From Void too far, too so far, sorry. Yeah, but, um, well, there is uh, there's some coming through here from Paralysis Score. They use that Nano to get in there. The Monkey doing so much work alongside that Echo executes Viper with that focusing beam, and the rest of the cleanup should come through here from Paralysis Score. A fully charged Zarya beaming down the Primal Monkey, and the Sleep as well comes through from Prog Champant, and once again a flip over here. Yeah, and Spike Gaming did get um, two kills there with that jump hack on on the Winston, which is. Quite impressive, I'm not really sure how you do that, just a bit of clean up and um, being able to take down a couple of heroes which are on like 25 health or, or even below. Um, but we're going to have Boris. Boris is going to have their, their grab here, which could be quite big if they do get a nice one, and especially considering we do have um, one or two more ults, including that copy um, for Void. But High Noon and a grab is going to go up. Yeah, High Noon actually uh, doesn't get anything, but it zones everyone off into that side room by the coast. Um, and they're just going to get completely bursted down by the damage of Paralysis Score. They do get a trade onto the Echo here, but I'm not entirely sure how impactful that's going to be in the whole scale of the team fight here. Stella goes for a reset off the edge, and Void backs that spawn room. Yeah, but um, luckily, luckily there, Void didn't actually use too many ults. So they didn't really put much um, into that fight, just had a bit of a dry fight there. Whereas on the other hand, Paralysis Score used a lot of ultimates. I mean, they used their Grav, um, they used their High Noon, and... They do have Nano, maybe, maybe Primal coming up if they do put that Nano into the Monkey, but it's not really too much considering the situation right now. I mean, they're on 83%, now 85%, um, but 
I don't know if they're going to be holding it for this. They're going to be able to hold it for this fight. And Grav already comes up. Ooh, that's a that's just a meaty Grav right there. The Taser Cannon comes through from Arcane Haze into it. It lays in so much damage. But instead, it's Paralysis score here. They look to be evening things up. Spike Gaming and Training Bot have just going, going mad in this front line. Getting all these picks off. Um, and it looks like with all those eliminations that came through... Um, off of the back of just the damage, the duplication, and the pulse bomb, it does look as if Paralysis score go ahead in the first round here against what we expected from them. Yeah, I mean, completely and toasty. I bet you are loving this considering um, Hell yeah. your attachment <laughs> to, to underdog stories, of course. And this is a big underdog story and seems to be working in that favor of Paralysis score here, which is quite surprising, as, as you just said. And I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I'm sure you weren't either. I mean, I'm sure you wanted it, but I don't know if um, anyone would have been expecting that that big of a difference. I mean, yeah. that was 56%, I believe, to, to 100, which is quite impressive considering that difference in Scrum SR. I reckon it was a bit of a compositional difference as well. You yeah. saw Tilted Waffle last time on that McCree against the Tracer that Stella was playing, and that kind of matchup bodes well for the McCree player, usually. Yeah, but now there's been a bit of a quick to ruin in that sense, um, considering yeah. Tilted Waffle has now gone on to Tracer, and... Stella is taking on the McCree, maybe to try and diff that, um, but unaware that Tilted Waffle has changed into yeah. Tracer. So this is going to be a battle of footwork here. Which team can get the better positioning with their compositions? This kind of matchup, this Brawl versus the Dive, is, you know, a very much positional play. And we see the Anti come through here onto Arcane Haze, but they've already dealt their damage. They got it onto Kankuro there. With that Brig being taken out of the fight, there's so much less sustain for that backline. Stellar hitting mad shots here on the McCree. Um, and we'll be locking down this point alongside the rest of the team. T-Bag did fall there, but that's the nature of these compositions when you're in a matchup like this. Yeah, but I think the interesting thing about this, right, is um, uh, in the last round, at the start, Void did actually get the get the first point. They got it up to 40%, if you remember, if, if the viewers remember as well. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, Paralysis Gog just came straight back in really, really strongly and took it to, to 100. So I think the same thing could happen here. It's definitely possible um, if... Paralysis score play in the correct way, but there's a bit of a hard push coming in. Oh, Ryan! Oh, no! Oh, Christ almighty! <laughs> Alright, well, we'll see a bit of a swing around coming through from both Reinhardt's here. In fact, both immortality fields have to be invested, so much less sustain for both of these teams, but Viper is the one to get the worst end of that spike gaming. Takes him out with a hammer swing, and this right here is where Paralysis score will flip the point over once again at around 40%. This is very much drawing parallels to last time. Yeah, I'm having a bit of deja vu here, and I just wanted to mention the support um, on the side of Proud of Score played so well there. I mean, I have no idea how Spike Gaming stayed alive in front of that wall, and the ammo must have been on point. Um, and now let's talk about ult for a second, because we see Spike Gaming has that shatter, and um, Viper has the beat to counter that, and we also have a window coming up and a copy. So this is going to be quite interesting, because it's, it's kind of similar ultimates-wise, but we're going to see the push coming straight in from Void here. I'm um, going to come quite hard. Well, I mean, it's just, a, it's just a bunch of toe work around the point right now. Bomb into the backline low. Means that the shield has to be utilized by Spike Gaming. And it was like a flash that came through from Stellar. I'm pretty sure it was. Well, we'll end up seeing a bit of scrappiness going through now as Arcane Haze is also traded out. But it looks like the point presence is going over to the side of Void here. Is they're the one standing on it. Baptiste able to hold the fort down and appeal for the McCree in the backline as well. Um, and there's no way there's going to be a re-engage here into just the, the unstoppable force that is that McCree and May. Um, and it looks like the flip will come through here for Void. Yeah, but um, I mean, that's going to be 50% on the point. Obviously, um, Void is going to get that back really quickly. I mean, already 50% already again. But, you know, it's getting it quite even here. And um, it is coming really close. As I said, it is, it's looking quite even between both teams. I think uh, I'm going to predict this here. It's definitely going to be a cast curse, but... I'm going to predict here that um, Paralysis, Paralysis score are going to take the point back. Um, I think they definitely have the potential to win, and coming in in the right way. Um, I mean, taking a look at the ultimate line as well, um, they are on the slight lower hand, and a window, actually, speaking of ultimates, a window's yeah. going to go up, and a high noon. So, th this beat from Kankuro is going to be monumental now that ultimates have been used by Paralysis score. If they can get a really good beat that sustains the fight, this could be huge. The Shatter comes through though and it catches Kankuro. They can't land a beat like that. Zarya has to invest Bubble and Viper and T-Bag have gone down. So, while that, that Shatter was happening, the Echo has done work in the backline. Wainy Boyd coming up with three here and carrying their team across to get the flip through. Paralysis score, they are not out of this yet. Yeah, but they put so much resources into that. They literally put three ults into that fight just to win one 
one point and just to cap the point there and they haven't even capped it yet i mean there's still a lot of a lot of um kind of stalling coming through here um i do believe yeah okay so that's good void is going to be backing up there um they, they know they're not going to win that here so so they're going to back up and i mean so many ultimates were, were put into that fire I, I mean you had three from paralysis score i think one or two from the side of void um training player is going to have their grab and um raise is going to have that blizzard as well um but i don't know if that's gonna really do too much if they were on the same team it would it would be really great but but of course they are not so not gonna really do much yet, unless it's massive and <gasps> boris oh! comes through with the eat onto the graviton surge i was just about to mention how monumental that could have been if they landed it but now spike gaming and the spot of trouble because of the lack of bubbles from that zarya now wayne boy takes over that main tank role and lands a slam onto boris they can try and get the team mech onto that but they're just gonna bomb and remake anyway the echo duplication gets taken down and tilted waffle somehow doesn't line of sight that bomb and now it's probably gonna have to be a stall swap well who on earth can even swap over to stall heroes it's just spike gaming trying to go into the point right now for paralysis score but they're not able to and void they even things up after some heroics there from a boris on the diva yeah i mean boris really really popped off at the end i mean getting getting a couple kills with that bomb um trying to get a remake kill at the end but didn't quite get it but did get the remake off of course um and of course the eat on the grab oh my that, that was really, really quite clean. And that's kind of the upside of having a D.Va as opposed to a Zarya when you're playing that dive. Because when you're playing the Zarya, you can... I mean, although you can bubble your monkey going in, and we're going to be seeing some brawl on this map um, here, as opposed to dive, which we were seeing on the last map. But um, but if you're playing the D.Va, um, which I don't believe anyone is here, um, you can get these off. But you can't um, if you're playing the Zarya, of course, since uh, Zarya doesn't have that ability. But, yeah. you know, it has different upsides and downsides, and one of the upsides is being able to get huge plays like that it's... and denying a point cap with this the crowd. This pick from Wayne Boy is mm. so interesting. They're going to try and go in, blocked off by that Maywall. I mean, already looking like they're in a spot of trouble here, but Rise is the one to go down instead, just a little bit out of position, oversteps themselves, and now the aggression can come through here, Tilted Waffle getting the freeze onto the Zarya, and the swing from Spike Gaming is the one to finish that off. Look at this aggression from Paralysis Score, even going through that staircase to try and chase up some of those stagger kills. Luckily, it will be, uh, <laughs> not, it won't be too bountiful for them there. There's another point cat will come through, and Paralysis Score have to back up just a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, Void are regrouping really quickly, already pushing in yet again, hardly a fight, and I, I guess I'm going to hand this back over to you, because that was a really quick regroup. Yeah, that was so good from Void, such a discipline to disengage there and get that regroup through. Stellar, though, goes down, and perhaps their haste goes against their advantage here. Um, they could have played fast there and tried to pressure down the enemy Reinhardt, they didn't have the resources to do so. And they'll get sent back to that spawn room once again, and now it'll be a slow regroup with that stagger on the teabag, and potentially the Lucio here too. Yeah, and that was nicely played from, from Paralysis score there. I mean, that was such a fast regroup though, um, from Void. I, I didn't expect that, and they're doing it again. I mean, they're coming in so quick, and we can see that, that difference in Scrum SR, because they are just able to regroup and coordinate so well, and know, know exactly where to go and know exactly um, what to do. And they're, they're, they're playing well, although they're losing, and the window comes up. Yeah, they force out the bubble with that amplification matrix fire strike combination, and that's what allows a blizzard to get the kill into Arcane Haze there. You don't see that every day. And the slam just to clean things up here as well from Paralysis score training bot, cleaning house with that 3k. And I just want to mention how good that engage was there to force out the Zarya bubble with that amplification matrix. Yeah, definitely. And I was actually going to say, I mean, I don't know if the amplification matrix was really worth it because as you said although it did force out a Zarya bubble I don't know if that was like the the value that, that it could have gone otherwise but a huge shatter wow yeah the turn shatter was actually brilliant there from Arcane Haze but they do get Graviton surged up their training bot was in hiding uh, but alas I mean there is one player down here for paralysis score that is the Doomfist now um, and it looks like they're gonna have to go for a hard disengage I mean look at all of this Arcane Haze just going mad with the swings and Kankuro two onto some of the squishies of the avoid squad but now browser score they have to touch the point 95 percent and counting and there has been a couple of bite backs here from arcane haze they took out spike gaming their counterpart and they're going for tilted waffle as well the freeze comes through and that should be going in the favor of the may but they invest a solo slam into that and the flip potentially could come through here from void and that finally will be the flip and i mean that was such a hectic fight so many fights and so many different fronts there hacks yeah, I mean, definitely, and, and that may ult at the end, um, that blizzard onto point just to try and get two, and it didn't even secure any of those kills, but of course, um, 
it did get the point. It's going to be 99 to 15 now. Um, and that's not looking too good. But a window does go up there. Gets blocked off by the main wall. Yeah. And Paralysis score. They've got the discipline. They're not just going to fight into that like Void did against Pog Champ and Sam Matrix. So now we get some aggression coming in. Another blizzardy, in fact, here from Boris. Once again, making things work here for Void. And Ray's getting the pick up on the spike. Gaming there means that just as long as they can get some stagger eliminations, it's possibly winnable. But Kankura, what are you doing? That is nasty. Takes out Boris and Ray's. And now it's potentially winnable for them here as parallels to score. They want to re engage. They threw down the window, but it's not even going to get utilized here. They're just going to start advancing onto the point. Viper going headlong into that Reinhardt. Might have to back up a little bit because of the threat of the swings. And look at Spike giving here 6 5 10 to that Shadow, but Arcane Haze will build it up first here potentially. This could be monumental, but they land it on top of the Maywall Tilted Waffle, unintentional or not. That was such a valuable play, and with Arcane Haze and Raze going down here, and a 2k from Wayne Boy, it's looking like Paralysis score will clinch out this map. Yeah, and um, Tilted Waffle literally doing that Reinhardt job there, um, blocking the Shatter, and it worked perfectly. I mean, I've seen it before, and I, I love to see it whenever I do, and they've literally, they're, I mean, Paralysis score, sorry, have literally gone against every single sword that both of us were having before this fight. I mean, obviously, you do love the underdog toasty, oh, but hell yeah. I don't think you were even expecting that. No, I was not expecting this. I mean, a 700 SR difference in these teams is Scrim SR, and Paralysis score are the ones to take oh. the first map. And it didn't, it looked close, but not, like, to the wire, right, Hex? I mean, this mm. was, this was, you know, Paralysis score mostly in control for the majority of those maps um, on Busan. And maybe it's a, their map choice that made it, made it winnable for them, because obviously this first map was their map choice. But either way, I mean, it's a really good showing from them. I'm hoping we can see more in the next coming maps. Yeah, I mean, I, I do completely too. And I mean, it, as you said, like, it wasn't super close. The, the second map, which was on, um, what map? Oh, I can't, I don't even know the names of the map right now. Especially not, um, yeah, Sanctuary. There we go. The, the one with the drum. Um, I mean, although that map was quite close or the point either or, um, it was quite close. I mean, that was, I think, like 98 to, to 100 or something for, yeah. for Void. But it wasn't like, I mean, for most of the other maps, it wasn't really super close. It was, I think, like 50 to, to 100 on the other two maps or, or even less on on, on um, Mecha Base. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, if Paralysis score keep up this kind of performance, I mean, we could we could have an upset on our hands here. K uh, I almost called you KSA there. I feel you should be offended. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, listen, wrong co-caster in mind. Okay, it, yeah. it happens. But uh, uh, anyway, back to the point. If this upset actually happens, that could be monumental because we were coming into this thinking, okay, seven hundred scrim SR, and we were being told even that this might be a three zero. But for mm -hmm. score, they are making it look like you know this could be a long-winded series. Yeah, definitely, and I mean. We're going into Icon World now, right? And this is definitely a great map um, for Korean Rush. I mean, call it whatever you want. I mean, I've heard loads of things. I've heard Neo Brew, sorry, Neo Goats. I've heard, um, of course, Shadow Dive. That that's the most popular one. But I, I personally prefer, um, I, uh, sorry, I prefer Korean Rush because it, of course, was invented in Korea. And um, yeah, of course, this is quite a well known, quite a well known map for it. We're not going to see it here. And yet again, training bot, um, hopping onto that Azari as opposed to the Diva, which is kind of preferred in the current meta and as well, you know, the Sigma double shield type compositions such as Sigma Bull, such as um, Sigma Hog are, are quite preferred at the moment um, in the yeah. current meta. Um, but neither of the teams are playing it here. And Boris, yet again, going to the Diva, and Boris is definitely one of the star players on the side of Void, getting two eats in one map. Well, we'll see what happens here. I mean, Void, they... They're the ones on the back foot, right? They're the ones that have to make plays here. They're the ones that have to be on the offensive because, obviously, one, they're playing a very fast-paced brawl composition, so in a literal sense, but also the fact that they are down one in the series. Yeah, definitely. And I, I would be kind of nervous here if I was void because I would be losing my dignity um, if I lost this map again um, to, to a 2.8k team. Um, and that wouldn't be great considering their, their team SR is 3.2. Um, but... Of course, a lot of the time SR doesn't really matter. Um, it's synergy that counts and um, coordination as well. But um, we're going to see quite a, quite a hard push and a nice rotation um, from Paralysis score here. 
Yeah, it's so interesting that Kankara is opting for the Arna here instead oh. of that Baptiste, but Ka uh, sorry, Rise out of the fight there. Really nice catch on the off angle there, and now Tilted Waffle can get to work without a May there. There's not too much stability for Void, and they're just going to get swung onto here, pinned up in fact by the enemy Reinhardt of Cappens, who just came in in a mid in a you know mid match so, um, and is already making their mark with a shadow already on the board. Yeah, and I'm not actually I'm not actually sure if um, you saw that, but um, but I'm not going to try and pronounce her name because I do believe it's a German name um, for the Reinhardt on the side of. Process score, um, but they actually got booped into the enemy ride and, and got the pin off to to secure that kill. So that was quite unlucky, or or just a bit of a, a bit of a self um, self sabotage for their team. But um, but oh not not too God. great um, so far. Coordination is definitely a little bit off. And paralysis score. And They're awesome. so fast on this. They're going for the yeah. spawn camp onto the main. Oh. You're kidding me? The the wall comes through there from Raze, but. Oh my goodness, that was a very fast rotation, and now they'll try and take the frontline fight where the May is out of the fight. That is such a smart play. Tilted Ruffle still goes down here, but slam laid down by Captain here. It tries to find something, but it only gets Viper. That's the only elimination they got from that. I thought that would have been a really good rotation and play from the entire team of Paralysis score, but it goes completely south for them. It's Arcane, Ray. It's like an Ar Arcane Haze there at the end. Gets a 2k pin. Wow. Yeah, well, that, that did leave Tilted Waffle in the back, and um, they obviously got picked off um, there at the end by Stella. I'm um, sorry, at the start of the fight there, by Stella, which pretty much left it um, as a 5v6, or a 5v5, if you want to um, call that, because of the May. And oh my oh. god, okay, let's go cack out. That took us by surprise right. there, and yeah. they get the Nano through as well onto the forest, so they're just going to keep going with this one. Perhaps, I mean, there's no tank line up there, they can't rotate up and help the Farah, but they're doing all the work themselves. Tilted Waffle has found two picks, and somehow stays alive. The Valakut was popped by Pog Champ, and that gives some extra healing over to Tilted Waffle here now, as it's just looking like cleanup. 4v6 for Void, and they're looking lost against this Farah composition. They get a slam through, and a bomb into the back line. Boris! Putting the team on their back yet again, time and time again. Boris is the one getting the eats, getting the bombs, always in the right position. I mean, this is, uh, listen, Void are being carried by Boris. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Yeah, I mean, completely. Boris is just absolutely popping off here. And that was really great coordination for that old combo. I mean, that, that was so clean. Um, and that, of course, I got three. But also, I mean, Void did put three ultimates into that fight. They, they put in um, that Shatter, the Bomb, and, and the Blizzard, of course. And I'm not sure if that was one less, sorry. Definitely not the Shatter. Um, and Another the Bomb could have, just by itself, could have got that. And a nice rotation here. Oh, and, my oh. goodness. I knew Tilted Waffle was posturing for that one, but I didn't realize that they'd get taken down by Rise there. And Kankuro falling too. I mean, it's looking tragic here, potentially. Four paralysis score. And um, Stella gets the cleanup picks here as well. Uh, beat invested by Viper. Not entirely sure about that one, X. Yeah, neither am I. That could have been a bit of a misclick. Um, but I I'm not really sure. It could have been a panic ult as well. Uh, may maybe someone got low and, and they had to use that beat there. But it was definitely not necessary in, in any way, shape or form from, from what I saw. And as what well, from what you said, um, from what you saw as well. Um, so that's not too great, but oh my Christ, god. Christ, and the DC. Oh, oh god. my lord. I mean, that... <laughs> oh my goodness. Paralysis score, I mean, they look good on the, the A offense, but I mean, now it's it's kind of going south for them on B. Um, after that kind of weird, winding, unfractuous rotation that we saw from them into the enemy spawn, I think uh, I think that was the start of the downhill trend. Here. Yeah, definitely. And um, that was not looking too great, especially from that first pick. Um from Rise straight onto Tilted Waffle. And as I said, I mean, they know exactly who to focus. They've seen that Tilted Waffle is kind of carrying this team and, and they've recognized that and they've said, okay, guys, just kill Tilted Waffle and we win. And obviously, they've changed that onto the Doomfist from the far and they, they were kind of playing quite well on the far, but getting a little bit countered, countered um, by, by that by that May kind of, um, and, and Stellar, of course, on the Kree, because that's just a immediate counter um, of that hit scan. But, I mean, we have a couple lots coming in here, and what do you think of this? I mean, I, I would assume that this could go to the side of Paralysis score, but no, we don't know what's going to happen here. I mean, from what we've seen so far, it's completely unexpected. I mean, listen, if we're talking ultimates, at least one thing I want to highlight is a Tilted Waffle, um, before anyway, I'm you know, talking about the past here, but um, in that fight where they used that kind of surprise barrage and then got nanoed and then built up another barrage and used it in the next preceding team fight. 
I mean, I, listen, the amount of damage that's been put in there by Tilted Waffle, not entirely sure why they didn't just stay on the Um, I mean, yeah, sure, there's a McCree on the other side. Stellar has been well, stellar on the McCree. Um, but I reckon if you just keep building up those barrages, you're going to get a big one eventually. Um, whereas now you're going up to Doomfist, you're not going to have that ultimate. Um, and here's where it kind of ties into what you were asking me. I think that if your if your attempt here is to combo the grab and the Doomfist ultimate, which I think would be a smart idea, you're not going to have that Doomfist ultimate. Yeah, definitely not. And um, I mean, I'm not really sure what they are looking for here um, with this kind of combo of of heroes. And combo I mean, with Doom and just get a pick. Maybe? Yeah, but I mean, Stellar is literally hard countering um, Tilted Waffle here with with the Kree against the Doomfist, and everyone knows that. The Doomfist is countered by Kree, and everyone knows that um, Thor is countered by hit scans. But I think it's a, definitely a better option to go with the hit scan over the Doom, because I mean, Doom is just like literally hard, hard countered. Um, yeah. By, by, it's, by um, Kree. Sorry. It's it's not even just the Kree that's the problem here. It's the fact that they're on Soldier Doomfist, right? I mean, mm. this is you know you, you're playing a slow paced DPS that puts damage over time, like Soldier in with a, a hero that needs a lot of resources to succeed, you're better off playing something like maybe a Sombra, maybe a McCree here, that can really get in there and brawl with the Doomfist, potentially, um, and set them up instead of having to rely on just range. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I mean, I don't know, this is just all, all a bit scuffed for me um, at the moment. And, of course, we've had the going back, so well, this is going to continue on, but I believe that's going to be an ultimate reset. Um, not looking yeah. too great. Um, I mean, that, that's down if they did have what their is this? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> what is this push here from Void? They just go completely in on the Reinhardt. They use that pause time effectively, and they take all the time climb because of it. Extra stagger kills here. I mean, that's not what you won. Getting having to pause because your player DCs, and then obviously the Baptiste can't save the Reinhardt there because they're returning from spawn. Good play there from um, Void, but I mean, the ethics of that you can debate. Yeah, completely. And I mean, I, I could imagine what was happening in their comm theory. They were probably just completely discussing exactly yeah. what they're going to do to, to, to win that next fight. Play. Um, which, which is kind of uh, annoying if you are proud to score. But the high is going to come up um, from Stella. Could be quite big, but okay, yeah, training block. And it, that's the big pick. Yeah, Stella uh, manages to get that one through there. I mean, they, they, it looked like everyone was hiding, but I guess training block was just underneath and, and got dropped onto, so... Once again, back to the respawn queue. Yeah, and I'm surprised if Stella actually survived that, considering they did pretty much drop down into the hole of Prowess's score. But obviously, they they, they finessed, finessed that, and um, and and yeah, they they got they got that off. Um, so we're gonna be going to the next fight with quite quite a lot of old yeah. to the side of to the side of Void and oh, already a missed slam through. there. Arkin yeah. Hayes didn't get it through. The block came through from Kapan there, um, and with this visor coming through from Wayne Boy as well. I mean that's just a lot of cleanup. But you're you're not eating all of that up with the Diva Matrix, Boris. I apologize. Grav and Shatter invested into killing one Diva though. I mean I know Boris is carrying, but clearly not that hard. Or is taken down then in baby diva form, but with those, I mean, with the lack of resources being invested to help the Doomfist now, Tilted Waffle goes down, so potential for a re engage here as Amplification Matrix invested here by Pong Chopper to try and clinch this one out. With Teabag going down, it looks possible. Yeah, definitely going to be possible for them for them to push in um, and definitely try and secure this point, but this is going to be a big ultimate um, here. Nothing to eat that Blizzard. Um... Yeah, I mean, the Blizzard just comes through and ends the fight. What? I mean, that was so anticlimactic for all of that build-up Hex. They they used so many resources to try and push that payload forward. And even when they had the pick advantage, they still lose. And now someone's going to have to touch. Who's it going to be? It's just going to have to be a Meteor Strike if it filtered Waffle. And they can't get onto the point. No one's there. Oh my god. That, that was what not is what this? you want. What on earth? Oh. I mean, I would have expected Karankuro um, to kind of wait there and, and just try and get back onto the point, um, but clearly not, and they just they kind ran of back to spawn ran to away, speed their yeah. team. Oh my, I don't know, that's a bit of a lack of coordination there, and I think we can just see that, that scrim SR coming through um, just at the end, and I mean, for, from the ultimate combos, combos as well, from Void, um, we can definitely see that difference in, in scrim SR, um, but I mean, it's looking better, a lot better for Void here, I mean, considering the last round, how the last map went, um, Void was not looking too great there, but they're definitely looking like 10 times better at least um, right here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, 
I mean, the team, I mean, listen, the fact that, I mean, there was a lot of planning there from Void, I think, was their advantage. Obviously, they had the time during the pause to really go over what ultimates they had, what their ultimate rotations could be, um, while, you know, everyone is frantically looking around in the Paralysis score voice chat, but they're flexible to get back in, so perhaps a bit of a disadvantage there, and maybe that's where it all went wrong for them. And now, we see a bit of a difference showing. They've got the Echo from Waning Boy, which, again, this is something that we saw from them on uh, Busan, and it really worked out. Waning Boy was carrying. Yeah, definitely, and um, I mean, this is this is definitely looking um, looking good on the DPS line, um, on the side of Prowl Cisco. I mean, Tilted Waffle popping off from the far, definitely playing quite well on the Korea as well, um, last round. And as you said, Waney Boy as well. Um, so playing well, get, getting the picks you need. Not really shiny as much as Tilted Waffle, but but kind of just sitting in the back and doing the damage. And already oh a pick there. Oh my god. The aggression comes through, and that was a stun onto Belief. Three members there from Tilted Waffle. That's insane. And I mean, it wins a fight for them here potentially. Tilted Waffle does get traded out by Stellar, but it's not going to matter. I mean, one McCree being down won't impact the team fight too much. It's training bot cleans up onto that with just a bunch of right clicks. That. I mean, that's the amount of damage Azari can put out a full charge. Yeah, and I mean, it's not really reflected too much by the ultimate charge um, here. And no. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. I mean, they only have 30, 40% now. Um, and I mean, I mean, I don't really know know how they have that little, considering they literally cleaned up like four heroes at the end. Um, but obviously something, something went wrong or something went right for the other team. Um, and they don't have that charge. And a Shatter going to come through. Oh. Gonna, not going to get anything. Yeah, misses there for Kappen, and now they're in dire straits. I mean, that mortality feel desperately trying to keep him alive, but it expires towards the end. In fact, no, taken down by Stellar, I will admit. But Arcane Haze has been traded out, and this amplification matrix, everyone's rounding the corner of it, so no one's in the line of sight to make use of that healing. Um, but alas, I mean, it looks like it'll be a cleanup here for Paralysis score, and that Lucia can get back pretty quickly. Waning Boy takes him down towards the end, too. Teabag, give me back to that respawn. Yeah, it is looking, um, yeah, again, quite good. Um, on the side of Paralysis Scott. I, I reckon they're just a way better team on defense. I mean, they're, they've been holding really well for like the past like one and a half minutes or one minute, like 45 seconds or something. And it's looking good. I mean, we have a lot of ultimates which are going to come through. A couple for Void as well. And we can see some of them come through already. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a very aggressive mail to come through from Raze, and it helps take out Kappen there. The stun, actually, they want to get the final blow there. The Graviton Surge comes in here from Training Bot. It's gigantic, but, I mean, the picks are already there for Void. They got the final blows they needed and took out the important players, a.k.a. Kappen. Um, and now, I mean, that was a Graviton Surge wasted into a fight that I think they didn't need to waste it into. Yeah, and um, I think I kind of cast a curse did that there. Um, sorry, cast a cursed that there um because literally as i was praising um the side of Prowse score for being good on defense they let the point go so um oh my oh, god lays it down onto three members that's what you love to see the wall comes through there in time though from tilted waffle denies the impact of it and stellar stunned up by that earth shatter they're still trying to win this one though is void amplification matrices traded out right now but the picks are going in the way of uh Prowse score here i mean look at that pog champion shooting through the widescreen TV and getting the eliminations you need. Now a high ground rotation will come through and they'll retain that position on top of the castle. Yeah, and so much happened in that little courtyard there. Um, so many ores came through. That was like three shatters and a copy and, and like two windows or something and that's just absolutely crazy. And yeah, again, Paralysis score looking quite good um, on that defense. And another nice rotation coming through from, from Void. A bit different this time um, and oh. it's looking good. Yeah, Stellar takes up Hog Champion early on there. The bomb comes through. But there's a beat from Kankuro here, so they're going to try and make up for the lack of the McCree with that aggression, but it just doesn't work there. You don't have your Baptiste there to save your Reinhardt in those aggressive positions, but they're still going for the mail. They get it onto Arcane Haze, and they're going to try and take him down. They do. Boris also going low, but manages to stay alive and drops down to that low ground alongside the rest of Void. This is entirely scrappy here, and with Kankuro going down, Training Bot looks to be in a spot of trouble. Cut off by that May will actually, but will stay alive. Now the cart will get slowly pushed forward by Void here, but it's not over by any means. The action will remain going on. Yeah, and this is not going to be a, really a regroup. Man, they, they kind of regrouped in, in the open there. Um, and they're going to be trying to take the point back here. This is a really, really fast paced fight. And already, a, oh, so much happening already. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, the stun comes through onto Kappen there from the Earth Shatter. Mail from the side of Void to try and clean this one up. And they catch it onto three members. Stella with the shots, with the follow up. 
And now it's one fight territory for Void. They've got two minutes to push it just to this golden checkbox of victory. And with Pog Champion going down late on in the fight, they're not going to have their Baptiste for the re-engage Hex. Yeah, and I don't even know if they're going to be able to duel here. And the, uh, no, the no, touch. About, no, no. Oh, the Echo definitely could have touched there. I mean... I have no idea oh. what happened. They just flew over the car. Maybe, maybe they thought the hitbox for the for the car was a little bit different. Um, but Wayne Boyd, oh my! And Boris, of course, with this with the player of the game, really, really deserved here. Um, yeah, played really well. This combo was so clean. I, I just wanted to mention that. Jesus. I mean, we didn't even get to see the kind of the combo that we were talking about there with the mail and the bomb, um, because Boris obviously looked away. But um, obviously. In the actual game, I mean, it was an amazing play. Boris has been putting Void on their Glad back this entire see. time with the Eats, with the bombs. And even towards the end there, there were a couple more players coming into it as well. Arise with the um, uh, really good ultimate usages uh, on that May, as well as some really creative wall placements. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, as you were saying about the wall placements, that's actually something that I wanted to mention as well. I mean, the, the placements of the wall, um, as, as you would uh, uh, interpret from wall placements, um, <laughs> Was really quite clean um, for the side of Void. I mean, they, they were pretty much walling off that Ryan uh, like every other fight or something. And I mean, it was looking good. Um, I think that's one of the main reasons mixed with Boris as well, um, <clears throat> why they won that. And I mean, a couple walls at the start of, and in the first map as well, were just kind of just about held um, for the side of Paralysis score with nice um, emos and, and just really great healing. Yeah. But um, I mean, th they were just really cleanly done. I think pretty much every time they went for a ball, they were able to get it off. Absolutely. And uh, Void, they've bitten back in this series and they've evened it up to one all. We'll see what happens after this short break. They will bring more Overwatch content to you pretty shortly. So don't go anywhere and stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Spectral League broadcast. We are back from the break as these teams have rejuvenated, gotten ready to go into our next map, which is going to be Junker Town. And before the break, obviously, we had Hex casting, but due to unfortunate events, or maybe even fortunate events, because Jaco is cracked, we have Jaco here now joining me in the caster booth. Hello. So I've had uh, some very interesting Where? stuff in the past uh, in the past two games. Yeah. Been... Yeah. Too. I mean, listen, the, the, it's it's gone back and forth entirely. The first map was a back and forth scrap on Busan. Second map was uh, Eichenwald, also kind of back and forth. Um, but there was a bit of a C9 at the end as well from Paralysis score. So uh, it's been a weird series, Jaco. Okay. What do you expect to see here on Junkertown, though? Uh, I'm expecting to see uh, possibly some dive or double shield, uh, at least. And hopefully not um Ready for hopefully not a weird comp as when I casted here last time, as uh, some of you may be aware of. <laughs> yeah, the last time you casted here wasn't it like Winston Sigma or something Winston, we had? It was it was Winston Sigma, yes. Oh Christ Almighty! And we've got something similar to that here as well, Jaco. Ball Sigma. What are your thoughts on this? Um, the Ball Sigma is actually um, I, I, I like four Sigma comps. Uh, because there's like you have Sigma playing as the main like as a main tank. And uh, ball, ball, uh, normally trying to just go on the back line, but they're going with a double sniper here. Uh, it seems like a widow ash with a mercy pocket on the ash, so it could be interesting. Yeah, so you've got nothing that can really dive with Kankuro here on the ball. And one thing we want to mention here as well is that there has been a roll swap. Um, it is Kankuro over onto main tank now, um, and we've got, I believe, uh training bot actually over onto the support role so a weird swap up there not entirely sure why they're doing this maybe just for the ball specialism but we'll see kankuro gets the slam in there already and these dynamites from the offhanger from tilted waffle are going to be gigantic already gets a couple in and they take out the widowmaker from it that is a good start here for tilted waffle and there's now paralysis score they're gonna be looking to engage a hard teabag and everyone, in fact, on Void here, going down so low on HP. The roll through as well, boops them all off onto the low ground. The Discord Orb and the Mines gonna clear things up here. What a, what, I mean, what a bunch of engages there that came through from Kankuro. Yeah, just, set, ju just setting the, uh, like, just setting it really fast that he is a ball player. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, like you said, this this ball pick, you're getting into the back line, you're doing all these boop plays and slam plays, and it's really good. Yeah. Uh, wow, ne next, got... yeah, next fight, um, it does seem... Uh, ah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's okay, the, it's okay, don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. We got I we got I, I, it. Can't, I can't really see the teams right now. Oh no no no, yeah, that's okay, that's okay. But uh we got the sights to come through here from Wayne Boys. Can Kuro appealed for when they get the the power drive in and actually Flux I think maybe interrupted there from Kappen. So now cleanup will come through from Void here in blue and or else the score they're sent back to that spawner. Yeah, getting that pick on the ash when they had the bob was absolutely massive and game changing for them there, so that was absolutely huge. Uh, Boris just seems to be, uh, have flux, but could, which could be interesting, especially if they uh, have a combo up with uh, some sort of window or maybe even a dragon strike. Yeah, could be very interesting here. Absolutely, and I mean this high ground control is so good here for Void, they're going to spam down and there's nothing anyone can do until Kankuro gets a boop through, so they're going to try and go for it now. Slam, booped away there now, as Rai is going to be pumping in the damage. The Bob is actually qu disrupting quite a bit there as Boris lays down that Flux, and I mean the massive ultimates that are being used here by Void is insane. I mean they've used Rally, Flux, and now Amplification Matrix just to clean up on this fight, but Stella is the one to get the, the final few picks, um, and Training Bot will fall at the end there. Yeah, just setting up on that high ground, you're basically untouchable there, unless they like get some sort of like hard engage onto them. But with uh, Wayne Boy swapping up to the tracer, uh, the the ball Kankara uh, has uh, someone to dive with, which uh, will be very useful <laughs> in the fight. 
Oh my god, okay. Oh my goodness, Tilted Waffle, you cannot be puking a Hanzo like that. You know what Rise is capable of on the May, and now you're puking them on a the Hanzo. I mean, that's an interesting decision to say the least, but now low ground forced here because of Boris's off angle, and look at these picks. Rise takes out Pog Champion, and oh, Boris wait. has cleaned up onto Wainy Boy here as well, but it's a C9? Oh my goodness, they forgot about the point, and Kankuro just into the bag caps that one up. And that's the problem here. The point presence is something you have to keep an eye on if you are void. Yeah, like, like just having, like, I, I was, I was expecting something like that, like having the points of pushed up, <laughs> but they're like, com like still setting up as if the point has only just reached checkpoint one. It's, uh, yeah. It wasn't even like, I mean, th there wasn't even enough people there for Perelza's score to even win that potentially if it had been a proper fight. So. That's a, a clutch play from Kankuro that, that really made the uh, the game for them there. And now they've got four minutes to push up onto this set, uh, third point, sorry. It's a flux now from Boris as well as so a Dragon Strike will come through. Slammed down into it. Ryze and Boris combining like Dragon Ball Z to get those picks through. And it's just a clean up now for Void as they will. I mean, they'll retain the high ground control, which is the most critical thing here. Yeah, uh, like, like I said earlier, using the uh, Sigma Flux and the uh, dra and the Hanzo Dragon there uh, can be a very devastating ultimate if uh, because of the amount of damage it does. That is a big pick to start off with. Yeah, I mean, you say to start off with, that's just more of a late stagger than anything. I mean, everyone is going to have to wait now for Kankuro in order to engage. Boris still holding this high ground against Cap and not really giving this up because of the help that they're getting from Viper and from T-Bag there on the high ground. And now they'll push into the small room. So much damage coming through as Viper leading the charge on this Brigitte hero. So unkillable, but Discorded Up has to back up just a little bit there. Hog Champion did use that Transcendence now, so it could be a potential maybe to use this uh, Amplification Matrix or a High Noon from Stellar to try and clean up onto this, but it's not even necessary. They've taken down Pog Champion here, and without that Discord Up, you have to invest the res. But that means that the Mercy goes down instead, and the rest didn't even matter in the first place. Anyway, Pog Champa goes down. Yeah, just Rise and Stella just they've, they've just been doing work this entire game, just getting those early picks off when necessary. Which, uh, which is something you want from a DPS player, is definitely. Yeah, and they have the Dragon Flux up here as well. They do. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they definitely have the ult advantage in this fight here, and and the positional advantage. Just setting up on that high ground, just poking, uh, poking onto the enemy team there. Well, see what happens now. Again, high ground control is the most important thing here for Void. If they can stay on that, that's that'll be good for them. And tilted waffle cap and slam down to the ground in that gravitic flux. Kankuro desperately trying to harass on that high ground gets the boop off, but I mean everyone just stays on the fan actually. Just moves around at the right time, but it doesn't matter. Everyone that did drop to the low ground is getting decimated by Tilted Waffle. That's three picks for this Ash player and looking for even more right now as Rise remains on the high ground untouched. It actually takes out Tilted Waffle, so removing the issue. There's not enough players here for Void to re-engage just yet. Yeah, that, that Dragon Strike from Rise was um, a little bit of a mass, well, a little bit of a problem because... Uh, because Cap and uh, got fluxed up onto the high ground, so the Dragon Strike did not affect him at all. Well, speaking of Dragon Strikes, one takes out Boris there, just a bit mispositioned, and now everyone will just be cleaning up here on the side of Paralysis score, potentially. The rally has to come through to keep people alive, and that keeps the Arissa extremely healthy and tanky on the point, especially with that gold just uh, denying so much damage. The armor, the gold, the rally... I mean, there's so much going on there for the Arissa that no one can pierce through that, and everyone on Paralysis score just has to back up a little bit. Yeah, Paralysis are just getting too much spammed by the, uh, just by the Hanzo, uh, the Hanzo and the Kree, and as well as the, uh, the Baptiste as well. Oh, with Kankuro. Dangerous on the high ground there as Ryze tries to take an off angle. Looking to scout out these positions that potentially the Reaper could come from. And that's what you really want out of your hands of players. Sonic Arrow is also very good at scouting there. His Tilted Waffle has been spotted out in the back line. Stunned up, so can't use the Wraith Form. And now, 15 seconds remaining in the down the DPS. It's going to have to be a clutch play. Kappen comes through with a Gravic Flux and lays it down. Viper stays alive, though, because of that, um, uh, that Immortality Field that came through from a T-Bag. 
There's been a trade out here for Pogchamp and is rezzed up, so they're gonna try and win this one out. Paralysis score. They've taken out Arcane Haze. They fall on that point, and now Amplification Matrix is the only hope left for Void here. They take out Kappen through it, but Rise gets taken down. No more damage available here whatsoever, and they'll roll this one through here. Paralysis score in the nick of time. Managed to make this work, potentially. I mean, it's not over yet, but it's looking like it might be. Yeah, it just the ball, like... It, well, it seems like comms wise, no one's focusing anything, uh, from my perspective. Because the tracer yeah. and the ball are just staying alive constantly. Is, Thankfully, uh, Wainy Boy is here to uh, to deal the damage and get the picks. The only one actually potentially listening to that focus fire as they get a nice 3k towards the end. And Tilted Waffle gets their name in there just a little bit too into the kill feed. It's overtime, there's no point in stalling here for Void. They're just. Delaying the inevitable, as it were. Stella, though, it's time to pick onto Winnie Boy. This could be the turning point, actually, potentially, as the Doomfist comes back here. Rise into the back line, putting pressure onto Pog Champion, but no, oh my god, Tilted Waffle denies it there. That was looking dire, potentially, with Rise coming back, but Tilted Waffle finally ends things. That was grueling. Yeah, having two DPS and a support <laughs> coming back from spawn, that is that scary. No matter, like, even if you have, no matter how many players you have, they can stall it out for the rest of the team to get there, and it, it, it could be deadly. But. Yeah. What do you think of the compositional matchup there? I mean, Kankuro, uh, we said they were a ball specialist, and they're coming through just playing that ball, didn't even swap off of it. Um, and it seems like there might be a little bit of a, uh, an OTP, wouldn't you say? Yeah, like, uh, well, apart from the, uh, like, the combos with the Flux and the Dragon Strike, those... Uh, most, some of those were uh, pretty decent in Void's favor. Yeah. But. We'll see here. I mean, you look at the compositional matchup, and now we see a dive here from Void, which is something we saw on the first map as well from them. Yeah. What's your thoughts on it? Uh, dive on, on this map can work. Uh, Having uh, going against double shield, they're going to have to play extra slow, especially with the uh, in as the double double bubble dive comp that they're running right now. They're going to have to play extra slow, uh, but it, it, it can, it, they can pull it off definitely. Absolutely, you really want the uh, Zari to be getting charged up there, pumping in the damage throughout the course of the fight and. I mean, Boris on Zarya here, I mean, this is a very mechanical hero that I think Boris is very capable of doing. We've seen them carry on D.Va in the first two maps. Take a, took a bit of a backseat on the Sigma this round, but we'll see what happens now. Arcane Hayes jumps in, forces the Widowmaker off the high ground there, and gets completely healed up by the Arn. In fact, could have stayed up there if they really wanted to. Um, and now Rise Stella looking to coordinate a dive in the back line. The ball comes through there, so Arcane Hayes can't quite jump onto the high ground. And I mean, Kankuro here on the Orisa has actually had some pretty good pull so far. Clumps them all together there with the uh, hole, the holes, as it were, and Arcane Hayes now jumps into the core of the team. Takes out Trading Bot as well with that dive from Stellar, who recalls completely safe and sound. Looking to just uh, pump damage into the backline here. As The lower you can get these players overall, the better here for Void, as they'll go for another engaged Tilted Waffle. So low on that HP, barely staying alive there as Wainy Boy and Tilted Waffle protecting each other. <laughs> just like scared animals, really. But it's only a matter of time before Boris, with that <laughs> charge, just comes through, gets the cleanup in there. A nice 4k to end off the first point for them. Yeah, just build, building up your charge uh, as fast as you can, uh, especially in the first fight, it can be detrimental for the team. Having having Boris on uh, on 80 charge there, I think it was, uh, very, very powerful. Especially if it's onto low HP targets or squishes. Yeah, and I mean, Stellar's already in the back, looking to actually maybe potentially look for a Pulse Bomb here. Still on the low ground as Arcane Haze goes in with a Nana Boost now, trying to deal some damage in there. But once again, everyone's holding strong here for Paralysis score. They're happy to just stay on this high ground because Stellar isn't in position to really deal any damage. Now, Supercharger comes through. They can burst through Arcane Haze if they try and get that Focus Fire through, but it's two kills already on the board for that Winston. Make it a third as well, and they're thirsty and looking for more. Oh my goodness, that is Winston Primal Mechanics if I've ever seen it. And look at the time bank for Void here. The, the, yeah, the time bank is very much in that favor. <laughs> like, like, it just... Uh, what was it? Paralysis score had four minutes coming into this. They have uh, nearly six. 
That's insane. I mean, 5 minutes 30, that's a, a good variety of team fights. 6, 7, maybe 8 if you're really fast on your engages. I mean, this is... They can basically just butt their heads into a wall and they'll still end up winning, but... I mean, listen, Peralta score, if anyone's going to make this work, it will be them. Arcane Hayes dives in as the Graviton Surge comes through here onto just a bunch of members and Raze with the Mines, lays them in there, takes out two of probably the most important players in that composition for the side of Peralta score. Teabag has been taken down here and Pogchamp and rezzed up, so it is a five versus a five team fight with five Perantil to waffle, both returning from that spawn room as well as Teabag. Um, so it's gonna be difficult for an engage to really come through here potentially for the side of Peralta score. We'll see if Flux come through here though. They'll try and land it onto Viper who does get half of that HP taken away and desperately tries to get out of the line of sight of that McCree and Echo. Peralta score, they're happy to just dominate these high grounds and they force Void all the way back into that side kind of corridor there. Boris will have to try and push up and make a little bit of space. Nano comes through here onto the monkey to try and engage into the back. They're dealing so much, uh, I mean, overtime damage. Um, and look at the health pool of Browser score. So low. And somehow, I mean, avoid, they managed to make that one work despite them being forced so far back. Yeah. Using the window when you're 1 HP. What, what I was trying to fight off a monkey and a tracer when you're low HP and you don't have your AoE heals, they're a little bit of a waste of ult there coming from Pog Champion. Stellar into the back, looking to maybe make a difference here with this Pulse Bomb, but two are already down the high noon, has taken down the entire backline here for uh, Void, and it looks like the hold will come through here potentially from Paralysis Score, but still, I mean, you, you, you've fought this hard Paralysis Score, and you've still got to hold for four more minutes. This is agony. Mm. Yeah, this is just, especially having one of your best ultimates just wasted, just gone, just be, uh, because your Baptiste thought they could 1v2 uh, a monkey and a tracer with low HP. It's not what you want from your Flexi Part, not at all. I mean, listen, However, that's, wait sorry, that's the type of things you might see in my Plat games, you know, the Baptiste yeah. can do it there, but... Not quite in a series like this, where you're up against a scrim SR of 3.5, I believe. Um, but anyway, we'll see what happens here now as the grab comes through. It's into Kappen and Pogchamp, and who will get taken down. Um, in fact, no, Kappen stays alive here on the Sigma. And with T-Bag being traded out, is potentially winnable for Peralta score. They just have to hold on for dear life. But training bot, so low HP, cleaned upon to by the backline DPS here. The, I mean, the synergy from the, the DPS here on Void has been absolutely insane, and they will probably finish up with 2 minutes 30-ish on their time bank after stalls being accounted. Yeah. Like the, uh, the, the monkey ball dive on the side of Void was uh, quite powerful for them. Uh, especially with uh, using mines directly on point, just denies access to uh, the point on the side of uh, paralysis got here yeah and uh i mean this is this is the showing we were kind of promised at the start of the series right you know we come into this we think okay massive 700 sr gap in scrim sr and then paralysis score take first map but finally i think void have really warmed up into things here and found their groove in the series jaco and why do you think that is no uh, they, they could have maybe like maybe not warmed up before uh, that that's probably my guess here However, they are taking the brawl for this last fight, or this uh, second to last round, possibly. They could be holding colors here, which is what I'm going to expect from them here. Yeah, and uh, Paralysis score now, they're the ones that are forced to really just <laughs> set a whopper of a time bank, right? I mean, you're looking at this one minute on the bank, and there's a close hold brawl composition being played by Void. It's going to be an uphill battle, I think. Yeah, just... Just draining as much time as possible. Uh, like, like, even though they only have a minute left, just having 20 seconds off the clock could be absolutely powerful for them. Yeah. However, they do know that they're hiding right side. Yeah, like you said, Prowse has scored. They're cognizant of the fact, and they actually <laughs> get booped off there. So Viper, <laughs> really nice to uh, deny that from Kankoro. And I mean, Boris maybe overstepping themselves past the shield a little bit. You can't just get lazy into this. And with the Bastion on the off angle, the Diva's not there to eat it up in the mech. So now, I mean, you have to make a decision. 
Go for the Bastion or go for the core, and either way, you're going to get destroyed by the other one. Rise has gone down without that mech as well. It's basically a 4v6 now. It'll just be Void trying to stall things out here, potentially, as they are getting the picks now. Kankuro gets that point in presence that we were talking about before, but this time it wouldn't be a C9, especially given the amount of distance that would, that would take. Yeah, just having that uh, first pick uh, onto the ball there. Uh, it was uh, huge, but they do have the uh, the spawn advantage here, which just makes dying uh, on the side of Proud Cisco just not as valuable as on the side of Void. Yeah, and the Flux actually invested. Kappen probably didn't need to use that, um, but I mean, hey, whatever suits you, man. I mean, Tilted Waffle has a Bastion ultimate, so that can basically one shot people, right? That'll be your, your saving grace in this next team fight. Yeah. Like, like, like I said, get as, just getting loads of time off as uh, possible it can be really powerful. Like, they're not, they're not even reached checkpoint one and they're in overtime. So, as long as Void win this one fight, then they can uh, stop Ooh, them right here that, right now. That's, that's a slam from uh, Kankuro there, and that'll set up Tilted Waffle to try and get some damage in. They're trying desperately to stay on the point right now as Kappen is being forced off of it by the enemy. They're just getting focused down the Sim Beam. Too much to handle there. Kankuro does trade out onto T-Bag, but what does it matter? It's a ball against the world right now. I mean, I guess you can count the Zen, but 200 HP is basically nothing in the wider scheme of things, and Kankuro will get cleaned up here. We're able to make too much of a clutch play, and... I mean, that's as far as it'll get there. 76.81 meters to the side of Paralysis score. This isn't a showing we were promised in the first map, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, just, uh, what, just the, like, coding claws can be a very risky game. Uh, uh, but just having, like, just getting rid of all, like, just the full minute before, like, they've even gone around the corner is absolutely massive because you can just regroup in spawn and then re-engage before our first checkpoint. Which, Indeed. Which is uh, very powerful for uh, Team Void here. Yeah, and um, Void, the problem with this is now the pressure's on them to make this 3 minute 37 time bank work and I mean, that's kind of the pessimistic way of looking at things, right? I mean, having pressure is never a good thing. Uh, Void, they looked a bit shaky in the previous maps. They've warmed up into it here, but now it's time to prove that they are going to be consistent with this. And given a, I mean, the same composition as they were playing on their original offense, it's looking like they might put up the same performance, but it's a bit of a change-up, actually, onto the Korean Rush for uh, Paralysis School. Yeah, I've, I've actually never seen Korean Rush being played on this map, so it could be very interesting. It's so weird. Why is it always this map, Jacob? <laughs> it's always this map where we see all the uh, funky comps. Well, well, no, Korean Rush isn't a funky comp, it's just funky. It's funky this on this map, yeah. I mean, it's not something you typically see, but... Listen, Boris, I mean, has a, a pretty wide range of beam, can probably scout out for that Sombra once they realize they're there. And, I mean, as long as there can be, like, a bash or a sleep onto a potential EMP from Wainy Boy, they just have to get that through, and then I think Void will be able to cap this along pretty quickly. If not, then they're building up to Nano here, which is going to be their main win condition. Now, Kappen goes in, Sombra and the Diva are there to assist, but the Reaper and the Moira are being held up by Arcane Haze in the backline. Arcane Haze, so low, it's sliver of HP right now as Rise tries to take out the enemy Winston as well. Kappen and Arcane Haze have both been traded out, now Stellar into the backline, are looking for potentially some fragments. Does manage to get it though. Um, is now everyone's scattered all over the place. There's no real clear engage for either of these teams given the lack of a monkey. And I think this really benefits Void here, Jaco. Yeah, very much. Uh, just having, like, just having like, uh, the echo. Yeah, the echo on the uh, on the side of Void is just echoes, just doing echo things. Really, is there's no way to put it. Uh, and now Kappen has to try and get onto this point and put that presence onto it, but Hog Champion has already been taken out of the team fight. Stellar into the back right now, getting a bunch of picks off. That's a 4k for Stellar, let's go! That is a an absolute bang to end off the map, and Void, a really good showing in Junkertown, and they're one map away from taking this series, Jayco. Yeah, just having a like, 2-1 uh, match point here. You must be feeling very good if you're a uh, team void right now. Yeah, they've, ta was... they've taken that momentum and really drove it forward here. I mean, here you see Arcane Haze, the primal mechanics that we saw before from them. And I mean, this is the thing when your main tank is playing like that, I mean, it's hard for the rest of your team not to rally around it. Yeah. The T Bag did have 
It's 24,000 24, healing there, which is just absolutely massive. It's absolutely insane, and honestly, I, I'd be inclined to say that role swap didn't quite work out there for Paralysis score. You know, Kankuro on the first two maps was playing that Lucia, was playing that Ana, really was working out for them. We had a 2k boot from Kankuro, we were having anti-nades all over the place. Kankuro was also the one staying alive most of the time for Paralysis score and won them that first map on Busan. Um, but then they go over to a ball, which is... I mean, you look at, like, an R and a playstyle, and then you look at a ball playstyle, they're complete opposites. I mean, if I can make it work, so can they. <laughs> wait, wait, don't tell me you're a ball player as well. Oh, Christ hey. almighty. Uh, my, 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 ball. Ball, my, my ball isn't that bad, alright? <laughs> the only thing I'll say to that is, it's cursed. Listen, you're a flex support for a reason. Anyway, <laughs> back to these teams. I mean, maybe Kankuro is a flex support for a reason. There has been a side swap here, though, so Paralysis score will be on the left side now, and Void on the right side. So, um, yeah, this means that actually Void will be attacking first this time, so they can be the ones to set the pace, Jaco. How do you think that will affect this game? Yeah, if, if they, like, if, if, well, if they do snowball uh, them here on Temple of Anubis, it could they're uh, possibly frightened paralysis score. But also if they like maybe even get full held, it could uh, boost uh, paralysis score's uh motivation, I guess. You could uh, put it into words. Yeah. But mo yeah. most likely here, um I'm I'm either thinking like it's either gonna be a full snowball or it's gonna be like a fifty fifty. Like they get held for a couple fights and then they just win. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a full hold here from Paralysis score whatsoever. I mean, listen, you can draw the parallel maybe between the control point map and how that's, you know, a, a kind of control point. You're basing your kind of rotations around a single specific location as opposed to those payload maps that Void were winning out. Um, but I listen, those parallels can be drawn, but Anubis is a hard map to wrap your head around in terms of rotations. There's so many winding paths you can take, there's so many different positions that the defenders can play in, or the attackers, in the case of Void, uh, on this first round. So um, I really, I'm not sure whether the parallels can be drawn between Control and 2CP um, as map types, but hey, listen, uh, rotations were what Paralysis score were doing really well, so that's what I'll give to them. Yeah. We may even see Kankura on the ball here again, on attack. That, oh that God, could this be, be so um... cursed. Imagine they do like the full round, they go to DPS now. <laughs> yeah, imagine. But yeah, uh, maybe even on attack we could see Kankura on the ball, because uh, because ball is, like, Temple is a very good uh, ball map. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a lot of positions that you can play as a ball, like a set play positions, get a slam in uh, while the enemy team is entering, and given that it's a defense first here for Paralysis score, I reckon that's something they're going to want to tend towards. If we don't see Kankuro on tank here, I reckon we're not seeing ball whatsoever. And yep, Kankuro tank, which means, I mean, they're not playing on defense, but potential for it on offense. Yeah. Uh, just Honestly, they, they, did, they did play very well on ball last match. Like they, like, they were pretty much doing everything a ball player should do. They were getting the big slams, they were trying to move people off the high ground. Uh, but yeah. I reckon it's also because plat teams refuse to tend towards defensive dive. I think that's something I've noticed over my you know, years of, of playing Overwatch, is that plat players and plat teams in general just don't like playing defensive dive. They don't know how to really set one up, so maybe that's why Kankuro isn't on the ball here. Five. Yeah. Well, we see we are on the side of Void. We do see a Korean the rush, which could be very interesting, yeah. especially on Anubis. So this is exactly what Paralysis Score was playing, but now it's flipped around onto uh, obviously their team playing, but also on a different map type. So we'll see what happens here. I mean, Wayne Boy able to just spam in and make use of this rotation to try and get some spam in now. But the engage will come through now. It will be Arcane Hayes trying to push forward onto the core of the enemy team and Kankoro going down so low alongside Kappen. But T-Bag has fallen here. Tilted Waffle on the off angle. Just doing so much damage alongside that far away Wayne Boy. Getting so many final blows off there. That's three for them if you count the Diva mech. And despite Stellar's attempts to get into the backline here and build up. Very fast DMP actually sets percent towards it. Wayne Boy is the DPS that really prevails there. Yeah, the, it, it was a, a good attempt from Void here, I'm, uh, to be honest. They're switching to the Brawl here, though. 
uh, but like with a Korean rush against the Farah, uh, you just want to push onto their team, really. Like just ignore the Farah and push onto the team. Is... What on earth? So this this is a this is a change onto Ryan Bap instead of the Monkey Moira. So they've decided that maybe this will be more sustainable into the Farah. I reckon, which I completely agree with. I don't agree with the DPS line. Obviously, you're staying on the Sombra just for the EMP, but. Who knows, it could go up to May later. That being said, 90% towards that EMP. It's getting up so fast here. So fast fight needs to be taken here by the side of Paralysis score. They use the amplification matrix, but it's just getting weighted out here by Void. They just sit there and, and wait. And now they have that potential for an EMP engage. They're gonna, uh, I mean, potentially go for it now, and they do. They set it up. That's four members down. But Wainy Boy, at the same time, lets loose that barrage. So buys time Viper T-Bag out of the fight. There's no engage here whatsoever for Void. That is such a good timing of the barrage and really good cleanup from training bot there to try and deny that EMP and it works out for them. Yeah, knowing that you have barrage and hiding from the EMP when they engage is absolutely massive and then just going in from behind with the barrage, it's what you want from your Pharah player completely. Yeah. But uh, it does seem that they have gone onto the full dive on the side of Void here. Yeah, so. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. So, the far mercy with the oh, sorry, not the far mercy. The May actually with the um, the McCree is probably the better option here. But it still doesn't deal with the far. Right? We'll see what happens though. Slam attempts to come through there from Kappen, misses entirely. But again, high ground is just being dominated by Tilted Waffle right now, spamming down that damage onto the players that got segregated off. And now potentially, if they want to, they can maybe even stagger this Baptiste in the back line. Yeah, just not, not not having your diva player, not like Boris, not taking onto the high ground where Tilted Waffle was. Like, like his diva, you have a lot of mobility, you have vertical mobility, so you're able to go onto like different high grounds and deny DPS high grounds. But not doing that there, obviously losing, uh, what was it five at the start of the fight it was massive, but yeah. You still, now, you, you sorry, it's sorry to interrupt yeah. you there, but I mean, now it's going to be, I mean, it could be training bot really, it has to clutch up here. They can use the amplification matrix either to heal or to damage, and that decision will probably determine the course of this team fight, given that it might be mirrored amp matrixes. Now, we get the bomb coming through. Boris and Viper, in fact, using their ultimates to try and engage, but look at the aggression that comes through here from the side of Paralysis Skull. They're just going to walk in. Wainy Boy deals the damage with the barrage. Teabag and Arcane Haze are out of the fight, and there's 20 seconds remaining now for Void. They're going to have to make a clutch play, and Raze and Stella are the ones to step up to the chopping block here. They're still, I mean, obviously, Stella isn't in the fight, but Raze is. Someone's going to have to touch, and Viper will, will be the one enlisted with that task. They're, of course, cognizant of this, but the male comes through. Kappen might get frozen up here. They're going to have to desperately keep them alive. The Immortality Field invested to allow that Reinhardt to stay alive, but the slam comes through here from the Reinhardt, and it takes out Kappen. That is such a good play there. The follow-up was there from T-Bag, and now the pin onto the point here from Arcane Haze, and it looks like this might be the win on the first point here for Void. That being said, though, Kappen has been rezzed up as a 4 versus 4 fight now, and the scrappiness can be dominated by this Farah in the skies. Wainy Boy might have the potential to build up a barrage over the course of this, even, as Boris is so low, rolling around on the point, trying desperately to stay alive, but it's not going to happen. No one touches the point there for Void. Not even a tick gained. And Paralysis scored. This is what we were promised after the first map. Zero to zero. Yeah, just... Oh, <laughs> Christ. We weren't expecting a full hold. Full hold. Hey, we, we theorized it. We didn't expect it, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my lord. I mean, there's a, there's only three options, YZ. Three there's options? A, uh, it's either 50-50, where it's like, like they kind of like get it to overtime, but they still cap a snowball or a full hold. Hey, I mean, listen, it was a 33% chance, and maybe that was, <laughs> maybe that chance was made higher by Wainy Boy's far. Of course, we've seen them succeed on Busan on the Echo, even on Eichenwald as well. But now, I mean, this far pick from them was insane. They'll go over to something a little bit different here, though. We're going on to a ball, a ball, ball rhyme. Nine. I'm not so sure it's like a hard one, ball. It's a hard ball brawl. It seems like yeah. So, if I had to guess what their plan is, it's to get a slam in to cripple the mobility of some of the players on uh, Void, and then the idea is to just rush into them with Kappen and Wainy Boy and get picks off that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if it's for like comfort pick tries because that there has been a roll swap. But the uh, training bot is on the back and Pog Champion is on the Ana here, which could be very interesting on Oh my uh, god. On this Dude, attack. Imagine like a nano doom seismic slam engage and the ball comes in with a pile drive to finish everyone off. That would be I mean that that'd be just coordination one hundred right there, but we'll end up seeing what happens because Kankuro has been scouted out on the side here actually, so I mean, if Void even wanted to, they could try and clean up onto them, but no. Kankuro just goes into the back line looking for a, uh, a slam now, potentially, but gets taken out. The May has dropped, though, so the Ice Block forced. And Viper goes quite low, but the Mercy isn't going to get followed up onto instead. It's a Reinhardt stuck in the low ground here. Arkane Hayes goes for a pin, but it finds absolutely nothing. The Freeze doesn't come through, though. Tilted Waffle has been taken down. And that'll be the stabilization here. Probably what you want if you're Void, given that, I mean, you have to full hold this. Yeah, just just knocking that May onto the high ground uh, from the start is absolutely massive. A bit unexpected to go through the uh, middle there, but it is a quite easy rotation. Don't tell me Paralsis score are going to throw away their chances by playing a Papega composition. We've seen too much of this in this tournament, Jaco. Yeah, oh my god. Is... Just having Kankuro only like being able, well, being able to mainly play ball here. Uh, they are going on onto this uh, onto the left side, which I did expect from from the very start. Yeah, I okay. So the Echo Doomfist now. So this is going to be like heavy kind of backline damage composition where it's going to try and get damage onto maybe Viper, maybe Stella. Not entirely sure what the idea is there, but Kankuro has gone down early on. And why are they taking low ground rotations? Surely with this Doomfist, you want to go into a tight room and then just get a bunch of Sassic Slam damage in. Yeah, just for forcing them into that left room can be absolutely massive because they don't have much spam here. They they have free reign of the left side and baiting baiting Boyd into the into the left room into the small room just can be absolutely massive. But they just the uh, Kankara swaps to the Arisa here, which is. I what on earth, Ryan Arisa? Okay, I mean both teams are mirroring this now, so. I mean, this is... Uh, Kankara played the Orisa on Junktown, and it was pretty good there. So I'm hoping it can be here. Tilted Waffle now looking to go into the back line a little bit. Slam attempts to come through there. Doesn't quite land too much. A couple players, but... I mean, Arkane Hayes is the one to go down here. And Boris as well. The cleanup can come through. But the freeze! It lands onto five members. Raise the hero play! It just That's just the brilliant ultimate placement you need if you avoid. And look at the discipline. Stella, Boris, they didn't even use their ultimates there. So they're going to have resources to use for the preceding team fights. What a play! Yeah, just... How I just... That, that, that play, just... Just, 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 just chucking into uh, the the mail into that small room though, just absolutely massive. However, we do have Wayne Boy on the far heel, which uh, could be a last resort option here. Last resort or intelligent play, we'll never know. But I mean, Wayne Boy is going to have their work cut out for them, building up this barrage, especially into a composition like this where you've got so many shields to try and get through. Luckily, Tilted Waffle can maybe duplicate like a Rhino and Rissa to add some extra frontline presence in this next fight. So that'll be what we look towards is potentially the play that makes it all happen. But now, backline charge comes through there from Tilted Waffle actually. Manages to graze a couple players but not actually pin up anyone. Tilted Waffle trying to go aggressive. Block comes through onto the shadow there. Arkin Hayes doesn't find too much of it. Instead, it's a counter slam. The misses for Tilted Waffle and the High Noon has caught both Reinhardt's the Echo Vision and Captain there. Stellar will clean up on this team fight. And with 15 seconds remaining, there is no chance here that it's going to be a draw after everything that has happened on this round. We're going to see Training Bot staggered out in the back line here, so they aren't going to be the one to touch. It's going to have to be Tilted Waffle here on the Tracer. Look and try and go through. Captain locked up with that Maywall, and no one can touch the point. That is a tragedy. That's the third C9 we've seen so far in this series. And these teams... They draw it out on Anubis, and they're going to a control map to try and decide whether it's going to be match point converted here for Void, or whether it's going to be equalized by the side of Paralysis score. Jacob, this is going the distance. Yeah, just... Like... It's just... I, I have no words. Like... I have no words whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, a, a game that casters were told that you know, might be a bit of a one-sided affair, might be a quick little match, has turned into perhaps a two-hour-plus slugfest now, Jaco. 
Um, I will, of course, uh, I'll make the decision here. We will go to a stream break to let the teams rejuvenate after all of that chaos. Um, so we're going to be going to that break. Um, so we'll bring you some coverage pretty soon. See ya.
Welcome back everyone. It has been a series so far. Paralysis score versus Void. It is 2-1 and we've just had a draw on the board. Now, Jaco, we are going to Nepal. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm excited to, because uh, I obviously didn't see the uh, first control point, but it could be, it could be, like, uh, another score to Paralysis score, because uh, of the control, but who knows. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we've seen the advantage for Paralysis score always come on the control maps. We saw it on first map, they won pretty dominantly against Void, it was, wasn't, you know, a complete roll, but it was relatively... Uh, you know, one-sided. And then you go on to Anubis, where they full hold and then just struggle on their attack with some weird compositions. I mean, this uh, is a massive contrast between, obviously, Busan and them playing normal compositions and Anubis playing weird comps, but the fact that they full held Void, that's a sign of hope for them. And given that we're now onto another control point map, which has that kind of stationary place that you're fighting around, this, again, I think, in my opinion, anyway, goes a lot well it bodes a bit better for paralysis score not too much of an advantage but a little bit um and advantage is an advantage if they do win this it'll uh, be 2-1 no 2-2 two, two, sorry uh and uh, we'll be fighting for match point uh well fight well the final map it is match point right now <laughs> But. Yeah, it's it's match point, but if I had to guess, I mean, Paralysis score, they're not out of it. They've been... Listen, they, they started off really well, and then Void warmed up, and then Void kind of choked on Anubis. Um, and it's all off of the back of one player, and I think you know what player I'm talking about. It's that far a play coming in from uh, Wainy Boy, and that is, I mean, you know, that's the reason they full held, essentially. Yeah, we, we were not expecting a full held coming from... Uh, uh, coming from uh, them, uh, just yeah, Not and then all. and then another full hold uh, coming from uh, Void as well. Yeah, I I reckon that was because obviously the the comp swap came through a little bit too late from Paralysis yeah. score. They tried swapping onto a far comp, but didn't even get the barrage online in time, but. We'll see what happens. Now we're yeah. on to Anubis. Uh, sorry, not Anubis. Nepal. Listen, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's understandable, understandable. Uh, but it both seems like they're going for some sort of brawl comp. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure, honestly, about playing the Reaper here. I would play like a McCree or maybe even a Phara if yeah. you're Paralysis score, even. Yeah, e even, with the, even with the Zarya... Yeah, uh, just have, just having a a diva and uh, a Kree could, uh, is a lot more beneficial than having a Zarya Reaper in yeah. my opinion. I mean, if you're gonna play the Zarya, you you might as well play like the Far with it, or you're playing something a lot more slow paced, maybe with that Kree, yeah. like you said, or even a Doomfist where you're just putting all your bubble resources into that Doom because um, that has been something the Paralysis score has tended to towards the, like uh, the earlier half of this series, anyway. So. We'll see what happens. Of course, currently in lobby, there is a pause due to the fact that uh, I believe Tilted Waffle, uh, no, it probably isn't Tilted Waffle since they typed in chat, but someone is having keyboard issues. I mean, yeah. If, if he's yeah, typing I'll, in chat, I'll, it's I'll, probably I'll, not him. It, it probably wouldn't be an issue if uh, he was typing in chat with the keyboard. Hey, listen. You can you can you can type with your um you can type with like your you can go onto like Windows on on screen keyboard yeah on screen keyboard <laughs> listen you can play Overwatch with that okay <laughs> but no I doubt, that's not I doubt that I it's doubt a, that would work no it's it's arcane haze so it's from the side of void in fact yeah I remember once we had a uh, someone not going to name them but uh, he spilled tea on his keyboard at the oh. start of the scrim wow that and he had is... to get a new keyboard. So he had to play it on a like a nineteen ninety eight like off white keyboard. Like, do you know which one I'm talking about? Why is it don't you? Uh, no, I don't know what one you're talking about. Like, I'm, like I'm gonna pretend like, like I do. Oh yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I remember like, that guy. Like off yeah. off off white keyboards, just the really really old ones that were just awful. Oh, I thought you meant who you're talking about, not what you're talking about. No, 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 no. no. Okay, I was gonna say, because like I thought you were referencing the person there. Anyway, we're in the game here. Doors have opened. We'll be seeing what interesting tomfoolery happens here on the pool. Control point has uh, well it's not unlocked yet, but everyone walks onto it anyway. They try to tow their way around this little pillar in the middle of the point, and I mean the symmetric turrets are just egging away. 
um, at the side of Paralysis score. They have to play super carefully, and Kaffin is going down so low, the shield health just is not there. Bursted down by Stellar on the Sumatra, fully charged up, and it is an attempt here for Tilted Waffle to try and bite back with pegs, but just not enough damage coming through from the rest of the team, maybe not enough target focus. The cap has come through here from the start to avoid a good start given their past control map um, shenanigans, let's say. Yeah, Pog Champion using that uh, immortality field a little bit too early there. Speak for the devil. <laughs> and just, um, just void capitalizing on. Just, just void capitalizing on that and just instantly going, going uh, hard as soon as that immortality drops. Yeah, going hard indeed and. Low ground rotation now from Paralysis score. They're gonna try and take a bit of an unfractious rotation, I'd say, with the way they move. Maybe they're gonna go for a sim TP, that's their plan, and yeah, they get onto the high ground, so everyone's aware of it on the side of Void, and they use the sim wall to try and get onto the point. This photon barrier is gonna be so... Well, I mean, photon barriers are crossing right now, so it's gonna be so good for either team, I suppose. Yeah, but now the aggression coming through, Kappen trying to swing onto the enemy Reinhardt, who does back off a little bit there. Slam comes through, it catches onto Lelouch, which actually gets taken down there. Kankuro taken out of the fight, and Ray's hitting mad shots on the May here. And, uh, I mean, listen, 60% are counting on the point now for Void, and I'd say this is pretty much nearing the one fight territory. Yeah, uh, yeah, just both, both, uh, Sims using their walls, uh, just make, making them cross. It, it could have gone either way there. Yeah. But it does seem that, uh, it does seem that Void do have the ultimate disadvantage here, as... Well, they only TP. have uh, three compared TP? to the Question mark? six. Kappen? Wait, hold up. Sorry to interrupt you here, but Kappen didn't TP with the team, so a completely useless TP there from Tilted Waffle. And now a beat engage from Kankura. They're going aggressive. A slam, mail, and amplification matrix have been used here, though, by Void. They want to end this right here, right now, and they're using all their ultimates to do it. Pog Champion and Wainy Boy have fallen. Photon Barrier attempts to come up here from uh, Tilted Waffle and Stellar. Crossing streams with that, but it's not going to matter too much as Void clean up here and they get the first round 100 to 0. This is entirely different to what we saw on Busan. Yeah, just like. Just Void must be really confident with themselves right now, being one map away from taking the series here. Uh, just, on that, just on that last fight, just having your only plan is everyone click Q at the same time. That. Most likely would not uh, be the best. Like like we saw, Cap and shattered uh, training bots gra uh, graviton and didn't get much value from it. Yeah, I not entirely sure what that last round was. To be honest, it, I thought it'd be a lot closer given that Wayne Boy was on a kind of mechanical hero. But now we'll see him on something that's a lot more mobility based, a lot more spam based. It'll be that far a pick that we were talking about before. Wainy Boy's whipping it out, not even with a mercy. So they're so confident in that far a play. Maybe that boot potential. They can try and make this work without that winged guardian. We'll see what happens. I mean, there's a, a lot of just towing the line right now, as this has been the entire series. A lot of positional play. And Kankuro is looking for a boot off the high ground, actually. Going for it. Catches Rise. Oh, no, it doesn't go in, though. Oh, that is so tragic. And now the aggression can come through here, potentially. From the side of Par uh, from Paralysis, yeah, and uh, trying to go in. See what happens though, Pog Champion has been taken down by Boris on the off angle. Without that uh, honor there, you're just not going to get too much healing if you're Kappen. Still, Kappen's making it work. Viper and Arcane Haze have been taken down. Boris deals with the main threat, which is the Farah, and Kappen's taken down there. Boris is getting so many of these final blows. Kankura did take out T-Bag there. A little bit of a red illusion, if I do say so myself. And Rise is so low on HP. If Training Ball can get the kill, it'd be so good. But Boris is protecting them with their life. So low, and the Diva Mech gets destroyed there. And now Kankura on the point, looking for maybe a boot play, as it has been. Flipped over to the side of Void. Boot comes through, though, and it's going to flip over here for Paralysis score. Oh, my God, Kankuro. This is... Oh, my... Yeah. I, I can... Jesus. I can see why his main role, his main spot now. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't even realize I swapped back over. Only only being only being here for, uh, to see him play the ball and the Arisa and I think a Sigma I saw on uh, 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 num uh, Anubis here. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can see why uh, they choose main support as a role. Well, 
There's a lot of swinging in coming through right now. A lot of pressure onto the Reinhardt of Void. Bomb comes through, catches Kankuro, and Kappen was charged up. It's a slam to clean things up now as Void will drive this advantage forward. They get their way onto the point. An attempted boop there by Wainy Boy, just waiting like a hyena to try and get that sneaky play through, but didn't quite work there. And now, I mean, they can just hold close. Yeah. I think Kankuro got a little bit uh, disorientated because... Uh, Kappen swapped his shield at the last second to uh, to counter the Diva bomb there, which may have got uh, him killed. Yeah, Viper was on the high ground there looking for boot play, but it's a male instead that comes through. So a bit of a, an anti synergy that came, comes through there. And now <laughs> the male catches onto three here. Blizzard freezing everyone up. The attempt for a high noon there from Stella. But guess what? You've got a barraging for it in your face, sending justice towards your direction. And Viper's the only one remaining there for Void. They'll send back to spawn and back to that respawn queue. It's been going back and forth this entire time, just like on Busan. Yeah, Wayney Boy uh, swapping over to the Kree here, even though he was doing perfectly well on Farah. We could see something interesting here. Yeah, Kappen actually playing so far forward. No! Delted Waffle! You can't be doing that! You blocked your own Reinhardt Shatter! You're on the opposing team! Oh my lord, Graviton Search has to come through to try and clutch things up, and it will here. Falls out of Paralysis Store, but... I mean, just look at look at that. Look at the ultimate investment they had to use just because Tilted Waffle made a May mistake. As a May connoisseur, I am displeased. Toasty is not happy. <laughs> yeah, it's just... I've, uh, we, we've had it many, well, I've had it many times, and it's very disappointing to see your own Mayo block you, your own Ranch Shatter. Yeah. Uh, however, they're going to have to build Nana fast here if they want to keep the point alive. Uh, yeah, Pog Champion has to just get maybe a big anti and then heal people up. The slam gets blocked up by Vi Rise, sorry, as a massive four man anti. Maybe they can drive this forward potentially as Arcane Haze goes down so low, capping off of the map due to the swing. And somehow the flip has come through here for Void, despite that really scrappy engage. But now look at the resources that are had here by Paralysis Score. You, yeah, you, you do say that uh, Reinhardt got swung, swung off the map. He got counter charged off the map. Oh, Thursday. really? He got counter charged off the map, yes. Wow. That was, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it was a fun sight to see. Well, I'll say that. Let's see what happen, has, what's going to happen here. I mean, Viper again is on this high ground looking for a boot maybe to catch him on the rotation and Tilted Waffle training bot unawares in fact no one is aware of Viper here so it could potentially go down L tries to land it but just not in position now the mail comes through here but I, I mean I, listen it doesn't I don't even know where it goes it goes to the back line assuming, presumably but Kankuro has been taken down here now Nana from Kappen tried to find something as Boris has to remake with that Diva bomb Amplification Matrix from T-Bag drops onto the low ground though so can't quite utilize it it's bobbing up and down 95% on the point right now the series could end here oh with Kappen going down it just might Tilted Waffle can't even touch the point so it has to be Kankuro that's going to sacrifice their life instead but Rise has found two eliminations here Kankuro gets a bit to teabag so once again it's up to Zalusha player to make things work but they're gonna get stunned up and taken down there now Wainy boy has to try and use the legs to get onto the point but it's just not going to happen there and void end off the series 3-1 after a very shaky anubis map and, and i mean they're, they're gonna be glad they closed that one out jaco that was a series and a half a five mapper that goes 3-1 we don't see those often no we do not uh, Kankuro just showing his Lucio skills, uh, just completely just showing how he can just get environmental kills constantly on that map. And, well, especially yeah. that last map there. Four environmental kills out of 13. Listen, the, the engages there at the end, I would say from Paralysis' score, they were so linear. They were just going in and butting their head against the wall. And they were so close to it. They were a team fight away. But again, I wonder, cast your mind back to that May block onto the Shatter. If they land that Shatter, it hits two or three squishies because the Reinhardt just wasn't quite in position to get there. And then because of that, I mean, you know, if, if you get that Shatter off, you'd win the fight and you'd, you'd win that round. I mean, that is an absolute turnaround play, the turning point of the map. Um, and it's what ended up losing him, that map, I would say. Yeah. Uh, it's just... 
Yeah, I, I did not expect that last round to go just completely back and forth, but uh, going back to Busan, they did uh, did go back and forth. Yeah, I mean, in that case, it did come in the favour of Paralysis score, but Void, they warmed up into the series perfectly, and I mean, they, listen, they were playing 5D chess while Paralysis score were playing checkers. Paralysis score were just walking forward and hoping to God that they would get value out of their ults, whereas Void, they were posturing, they were using them on high grounds, they were using them from kind of secluded locations, but then getting, like, surprise amplification matrixes out, they were getting surprise mails out, they just couldn't be denied or, you know, kited because they didn't expect them coming. Paralysis score, they weren't in Void's head whatsoever in fact it was much the other way around yeah definitely just just yeah i'm uh, well, i'm sorry well, I'm, I'm just, i mean my listen, it was an blank. insane series it was an insane yeah, series definitely. i don't blame you i mean I, I, you're speechless i mean aren't we all but with that being said then i guess we will go to a short stream break here while we, we prepare to have the interview coming through um and then we'll uh, bring that to you in a moment yep see you then
Hello everyone and welcome to this interview with Boris aka Boris Johnson himself from the side of Void. They won this series 3-1. to one. There was a little bit of a draw in between Boris but I mean how do you feel about the fact that you managed to get through that grueling series? Honestly like we obviously came into this and we were kind of hoping for the uh, quick roll but, um, but they actually really surprised us on the first map on um, Busan. And we were really frustrated with that because we wanted to get this. We wanted to do this fast. We wanted to uh, see how if we could actually take them. But they were much stronger than we anticipated. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so a after that, it was just us hoping, really. Yeah, right. I mean, honestly, it looks like it. Um, uh, you guys, I mean, you struggled in a couple of places, right? It wasn't just Busan as well. Um, that and Nubis match, you both full held each other, which was um, very funny. Why do you think those full helds actually happened? Um, well, we actually have, you know, a little bit of inside information um, from um, Viper, our main support, who used to be affiliated with that team. And the, he told us that Anubis was arguably their strongest map. And it was also it was one of our stronger ones, and we could like we had no idea how to deal with them honestly on attack. It was we were honestly just treading water. We had no idea what we were doing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jaco, you were you know you were there for that kind of Anubis uh, match, and I mean, what were your thoughts on that? Obviously, you saw it from kind of my POV, um, yeah. uh, you know, the caster POV. So, uh, just I was well with the Farah, just completely. From where any board is complete, uh, just complete dominance really. The on the Farah, the the Farah play was very well played, but I was com completely surprised when on attack, uh, they went to a uh, Arissa, like the swap from uh, a, a Rhyme ball composition to an Arissa Rhyme, which surprised me a lot. It's, it also Morris, surprised me. Sorry, it also surprised me that um, that you guys were actually running a Ryan Arissa comp. <laughs> Well, yeah, Boris, what are your thoughts on that? Like, what are your thoughts on the general compositions on that map? Well, honestly, you're asking the completely right person here because that is the, that uh, specific comp is my brain, baby. Uh, I Ooh. used to be an Orissa main, and me and uh, Hayes have been practicing a lot uh, with running the Rhine and Orissa, both in scrims and in comp. And we've gotten to the point where we can make it work so efficiently that we've actually had teams try to copy it in some sense, but they just can't get the entire like love of Arissa that I have down. <laughs> oh my I, lord! I am one of the only people in the world who actually loves playing Arissa, and Listen, I'm I, kind I, of I, forcing I it when feeling. I can. I know the feeling. I used to be an Arissa player myself, but oh, beautiful. Um, I unfortunately Arisa. swapped to May, which is yeah. uh, a little bit worse. But, but we really just went into the defense on Anubis thinking they were going to run that Pharah. And that Pharah yeah. was just dangerous. So that's also why we dropped the Lucio, got a Mercy for the Kree, so we could maybe contest it. And we just, we've been practicing the Orissa on Anubis for so long that we just like, don't don't go Diva, go uh, Orissa, see what we can do. That makes sense. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, Jayco, do you, know, do you have any questions? Because I've asked all the ones I really am interested in. Um... Well, go, well, going back to the Orissa, uh, are, are, you, are you the guy that I met in the comp the other day with 1.4k hours on Orissa? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an alt, alt account called Borisa. That's just an Orisa one-trick account. <laughs> but no, I haven't quite reached those hours yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I'm surprised so someone can actually enjoy Orissa. Yeah, that's insane. Like, I used to be like that, but obviously then I realized it's just Orissa go burr, but... Um, all right, I guess we'll move on to the chat questions then, because we've got a couple here. First one is actually from your teammate, Boris, I believe, Arkane oh. Hayes. How oh, does no. it feel being the best diva in the solar system? Um, pretty fucking amazing, I'd like to say. Sorry for swearing, but uh, yeah, pretty amazing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Man's going to get fined. <laughs> I'm going to get fined, uh, oh my god. No, um, it's actually funny that I'm the... Like he's saying this, but because I'm the lowest SR on our team, like by far. Christ, no, yeah, on the first couple of maps, I mean, I was praising you for being, like, the carry of your team, your bombs, your eats, like, that was insane. Honestly, I'd like to need, I need to do a shout-out, because otherwise he's actually going to hurt me. Um, I need <laughs> to make a shout-out to a coach, uh, Taffboy, who has really helped me uh, get this, um, get my diva off, uh, off the ground, actually teaching me and how to play uh, the character and how I should play, and yelling at me whenever I don't play when I how I should 
Because wow. when I first started, I had a problem where I accidentally played Diva like a like I would a Saria, and that just does not work. <laughs> yeah, I um, I mean, co coaching is always important in a team, right? I mean, um, it's one of the key parts that kind of brings improvement, but also, like you said, like being able to flex over and play over heroes too. So that's something that I find is really important. Um, and I mean, Jaco, you manage your team yourself as well. I mean, what do you yeah. think is the importance of coaching? Uh, well. It, it, there's two different, well, there's a couple of different coaches, because you have coaches that uh, like mainly focus on team play, so like how, how coordinated you are in the team. But then you also have one-on-one -on -one coaching, is like how you improve on yourself, uh, which yeah. are two completely like different uh, coaches, and you can't really compare them, really. Yeah, and I'm assuming for Boris, obviously, you have that kind of developmental player-based coach, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, he is really focusing on the individual player at all times, but then also like focusing on what we need to do as a team. For example, during uh, brawl comps, stack on uh, stack on haze at all times, focus the lamps better, uh, just better comps, all that. He's really going above and beyond to help us. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what a coach should be doing. You know, you got to really put love and effort into your players to make them the best they can be. Um, yes. Our final question here now is just a, bit of, a little bit of a meme one, I guess, from Unsightly Goon, um, obviously the, the chad himself. Uh, will Viper be leaving Void? <laughs> well, um, we have been discussing it, and we definitely think it will be in the best interest of the team, but don't tell Viper that. He hasn't, uh, we haven't informed him <laughs> of the decision yet. Um, but no, we, I, I, memes aside, I hope he doesn't, because... First of all, we don't want to look for main support. They have the most difficult role to fill. And, oh, uh, Jayco yeah. can tell you all about that, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, we've already had some very recent roster changes, and just that was killing us, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess I'll wrap up our coverage of the interview for today. So thank you, Boris, for coming along again. Congratulations on your win today, despite how hard fought it might have been. So thank you for that. Um, and that'll be it from me and Jaco for today, all you viewers out there who came through and watched. Thank you for coming along. That's been us for today, myself, Jaco, and obviously Hex earlier on as well. We'll be seeing you in a couple of days for our next broadcast. Have a good one. See ya.